a sentence is also a kind of string, right? And when you are given a sentence, what is the best way that you can separate two different words? It is not the punctuation marks. It's not the full stop. It's not even the capital letters. What is the most basic thing? That is the space between two words, right? That is how you identify, okay, this is my first word and this is the second word, correct? And that is what you have to exactly use in the problem sorting a sentence on lead code. Let us see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see how you can start to approach this problem and then ultimately reach an efficient solution. Going forward, we will also look at the dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this actually works. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. So you are given a shuffled sentence, that is a string, right? Where the last character of each word defines the actual position of the word. What does that mean? So let us take up our sample test case. So in this test case, you are given a shuffled string and in each of the word, this last index is telling you the actual position of the word. So this word sentence comes at the fourth place in your original string, right? So given this kind of a string, you have to return me the original string. So to understand it better, let us look at the first test case. If you look at the first test case, I see the index one over here, right? And this is my word, this. So this will come at the first place. Next, you have to find the second word, right? So when you look for two, you see is two. And this is the actual word, right? Is. And this will come at the second place. Then you have A. And then you have the last word that is sentence. So for test case number one, this is your answer. You need to return this. Similarly, let us look at a second test case. In the second test case, I have myself, me, I, and. You can see that nothing is case dependent over here. So you can see that M could be large and then A can be small. And all the other words can have the uppercase as well, right? That does not mean if they will come in the beginning. You just need to look at the indexes, correct? So in our second test case, first of all, I will get me, then I'll get myself, then I will get and, and then I will get I. So your answer would be me, myself, and I. And for test case number two, this is your answer. Now, if you have understood the problem statement correctly, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us see how we can go about approaching this problem. Okay, so let us suppose you are given this sample string. Now, as soon as you see this problem, what is the most naive approach or the first thought that comes to your mind when you want to solve it? You can say that, okay, I need to form a new string with the elements in the correct place, right? So you can say that, okay, I will search for the number one. Okay, I found one. That means this is my first character. And what I'm gonna do is, I will just write down this. Then what I could do is, I can search for my second word, right? So once again, you will start from the beginning and okay, you found your second word. So you can write it down. Once again, what you're gonna do is, you will start from the beginning and try to search for the third word, right? And then you find an A. Then you can write it down and then ultimately you will get your last letter. Correct? So this is how you can get a solution. And this solution is correct. You will get a correct answer every time. But if you observe closely, this is not very efficient. Why? Because every time you have to find a position, you start from the beginning, right? You start from the beginning and then start traversing the string to find, okay, this is my first word. Then you start again, okay, this is my second word and so on. So you are taking up a lot of time in that procedure. Certainly, you need to find a way so that you can optimize this solution. Optimization usually means approaching this problem in a fast way so that you're not traversing the string again and again. So what can we do about it? Okay, so I have this string in front of me once again and I have to solve it. So what we can do? You remember how we started to traverse the string from the left direction, right? And let us say I got this first word, that is two, right? So First of all, how do you identify that, okay, this is a word? What you need to look for is, 
you need to look at the spaces. When you are traversing a string, as soon as you encounter a space, that means you have completed one word, right? So, as soon as you complete one word, you know that, okay, the last character will be the correct index where this word will be placed, right? And what we can do is, we can store this information somewhere. So, what I'm going to do is, I will create a hash set where I will store the index along with the word. So, right now, I have just traversed the first word, right? And I find its index to be 2, that is the last character. So what I will just do is, I will place this index and I will place the word in it. So now, this hash set is storing that at the second place I have the word is and that is correct. Moving on, when I start traversing my string again, I once again stop at the space because a space separates two words, correct? So when I look at the new word that I found, I take up my last character that is 4, that will tell me that okay, the index is 4. And what is the word? The word is sentence. So once again, I will store sentence in my hash set. Right? Similarly, when I traverse this complete string, my hash set will get completely filled up. In the first index, I will have the word this. And in the third index, I will have the word a. So now if you look at this hash set, I have my complete string in there. And now when I have to construct the original string from this, what will I do? I will start to query this hash set one by one. First, I will query the first index, then I will query the second index, then third and then fourth. And when I query all of them, what I will get? I will get this is a sentence. And this is your answer. Right? So, in just one traversal, we were able to get our answer. Now, let us quickly do a dry run and see how it's actually working. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function sort sentence. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with our dry run of the code, what is the first thing that we do? We create a map that will store all my words in a correct order. So this is how my map will look like, right? Next, going forward, what do we do? We need to find a way to separate all of these different words, right? So we start a for loop and we split each word based on the space character. So you can see that we are splitting the string on the space character. So you will iterate over each word one by one. Next, we need to find the index, right? So this is how we will get the last index. We take the length and subtract one. So now we know that, okay, this is my last index. But along with the index, you also need to form the actual word, right? So when I get the index, I can form the actual word using the substring method. That is from the beginning up to the last index. Once I get both of these values, the index and the word, what I'm just going to do is I will put them in my map. So now when I have put these values into my map, what will happen is, for the first word, I have is 2. So it will store 2 and it will store the word in my map. Right? So this is how this loop will continue to happen and I will have all my indexes and all the correct words in this hash set. Now, when this hash set is filled up, what do I need to do? I just need to build this actual string. Right? So I will just iterate over this hash set one by one and then add all of these words together and then ultimately return them as the answer. Easy, right? The time complexity of this solution is order of n. That is because we are iterating the string only once and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because we need some kind of a data structure to store the correct position of all of these words, right? I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that Whenever you see problems where you have to deal with individual words in a string, for example, there could be problems like, okay, given a string, find the total number of words. Given a string, give me the average number of characters that are present in every word, right? So wherever you have to deal with individual words, the space character 
is your best friend. You know that you have to split the string on the space character. And once you split it, you can then operate upon your entire string or the sentence word by word. And that can be really handy, right? What other problems did you see which can be solved using this concept now? Can you solve this problem itself using some other efficient method? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. So also let me know what other kind of problems you want me to solve. Easy, medium, hard, dynamic programming, what else? I'll be glad to help you out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya.